To operate a drone within the specific category of the UAS regulations in the UK, you need an operational authorization from the CAA. Just to make you aware, you might sometimes see or hear this operational authorization abbreviated to the letters OA. The operational authorization outlines the privileges and limitations imposed on you and your unmanned aircraft based on what specific permissions you've been granted by the CAA. For the most part, you will apply for a specific predefined risk assessment or PDRA. This basically means that you'll be issued with a set of standard permissions by the CAA because they have completed a risk assessment for you based on a set of criteria. This is why the separation distances and weight limitations exist. The GVC itself does not automatically grant you the authorization to fly within the specific category. It's essentially the ticket or the certificate which you can then use to apply to the CAA in order to operate under a PDRA and get your operational authorization. Think of it a bit like passing your driving test and then having to apply to the DVLA to actually be granted your license. The test paper you receive from the test centre when you pass your test isn't your actual license. It allows you to apply for one. Going back to PDRAs then, you can find a list of all the PDRAs currently available and the requirements for each PDRA within a document called the CAP722. Don't worry about this now though, we'll cover the CAP722 in a later lesson. Jumping outside of the PDRA frameworks for a second, if the type of flying you want to do or the drones you want to fly cannot be done under one of the CAA PDRAs, then you'll probably have to create and submit a different set of things to the CAA after you've completed your GVC. Essentially, if what you want to do doesn't fall into the risk assessments already conducted by the CAA, you'll need to do these in detail yourself and provide the CAA with something called an Operating Safety Case, or OSC, a SORA, or an alternative risk assessment. Again, there's more information in the CAP722 about this, and if you need to move down this route, it will be something to take a detailed look at once you've completed this course. So, how do the PDRAs work with an operational authorization? Well, it works a bit like a recipe card. The PDRA will tell you that you'll be limited to certain types or weight of aircraft. It will tell you what the maximum distances are that you can fly your unmanned aircraft out to and what heights you can fly up to. It will also tell you the separation distances that you need to maintain from uninvolved people during different phases of the flight. They actually make it really simple and clear to understand what you are and aren't allowed to do. Now you have to renew your operational authorization every 12 months, which does involve paying a fee directly to the CAA. At your annual renewal, you'll need to submit an up-to-date operations manual and evidence that you have the minimum amount of required flight time in order to receive your renewal. For the UK PDRA01, which is what you'll likely be applying for in the initial stages, there is a minimum requirement to have two hours of flying recorded into your flight log in the three months prior to the renewal of your operational authorization. If you haven't been able to maintain that, you must go out and do a number of practice flights to achieve this two hour minimum before you apply to the CAA for your renewal. As more PDRAs are released into updated versions of the CAP722, you may be able to do bolt-on courses for your GVC, which will allow you to apply for new privileges to be added to your operational authorization. These include things like EVLOS or Extended Visual Line of Sight and Flight Over Crowds. Again, coming back to the driver's license analogy, but this time for the operational authorization. Now we've used our GVC to apply to the CAA and received our operational authorization from them. We have our initial permissions to drive a basic car, our PDRA01 drone permission. But if we wanted to drive a light goods vehicle, we'd need to do further training and an exam for that. That will then be put onto our license. So your operational authorization from the CAA is like the license card and the different PDRAs are there to allow you to drive a car, then to say drive a motorbike, and ultimately if you wanted to continue training and doing additional exams, you could have the ability to drive an HGV added to your license. So that just about wraps this one up. In the next lesson, we'll take a detailed look at the UK PDRA01 and the privileges and limitations imposed on us when we operate under it in the specific category.